Welcome everyone, thanks so much for, um, for being here today. Uh, it's really great to be able to talk about this exciting project and um, I wonder if we can maybe get started with an, an easy question. I'm really curious, how did this project come about? I'd love to hear about it from, from your different perspectives. You know, I met, I met Zainer uh, about a year and a half ago where I was introduced to Zainer because of an article I'd written for Domus about the kind of current state of architectural manufacturing. And um, Zainer's creative designer, uh, Tex Jernigan, reached out and said, you know, why don't you come, come and, uh, and, and see what, what we're doing here. And so I went down for a trip, and this was like the first introduction, and it was totally informal, which is great. I think it's like the best way to start a project is mm -hmm. with, with no, you know, just kind of getting to know each other. And uh, that visit was, was um, insp I mean, inspiring, of course, but, but very exciting and, and very informative. I learned a lot, and then it took a few months to process it. And you know, I would say like maybe three, four months later, um, we started talking about doing something physical at the scale of furniture, mm -hmm. and, uh, that, and that was about a year ago. Mm -hmm. So did you make a proposal? Did you have something in mind? Yeah, I mean, I think when you first, when you, you know, obviously I had never worked with, with technology like, like this before, and, um, or quite like this before, and I, I think the first thing that we did in my office was come up with some different directions to sort of test the water in a way and see what was possible um, from, a, from a technical point of view, but also from a cost point of view. And, and we, we, we definitely f had some, some failures early on and, and some things that came back you know, with $75,000 price tags. But at this point, <laughs> you know, we were only talking about an object. Mm -hmm. you know, we weren't even thinking beyond that. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and so, and you know, we loved having designers come to Kansas City, see our shop. So you see the process, you see mock-ups, you see different ways that we're using materials. Mm -hmm. uh, we have unorthodox approaches to equipment and fabrication. You know, we like to start from what's the intent? You know, what are you trying to get out of this? You know, if, 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 if you have everything specifically designed, it can be made through typical channels, that's stuff we don't look at. Mm -hmm. You know, with Jonathan, it's really interesting because you know, he kind of absorbs what we're about, what we're doing. And, and you're right, like the first thing wasn't worth doing. Yeah, the first thing we said was <laughs> exactly, it. you know, that's also yeah. a, a, a role that we play in a way, you know. And the feedback was so essential. You know, we immediately realized what not to do, you mm -hmm. know, and sometimes what not to do Which was what? is, well, we were, we were working on... Briefly, I'm well, curious. What, well, we were, what was, you know, what's on the like, Well, for me, for me, it was like, you know, when you fr visit Zaner, you, you immediately absorb two, one thing, and that's, that's the, what's on the, f on the surface, which is metal cladding. Mm -hmm. And you end up with, with you know, really you know, rare metals and, and beautiful metals and it's exotic metals and, and they can be formed in, in any way possible. And so that's what you immediately see and, and it's expensive and, and you're kind of drawn into that. And then, um, but we never even, we never even uh, proposed that because it was almost too easy. You know, imagine like a cabinet, which is a scaled down uh, Gary building in a sense. I mean, it's, it's, it's too easy, it's too right. fast. So, so we, the first thing we proposed, I thought, well, well let's try something that's, it, let's meet in the middle in terms of scale. So I work at, at a scale which is very intimate with the body and they work at a scale which is, is, is much larger. Um, and, and so I said, well, let's, let's find it. Maybe the, the area of overlap is this, is this question of scale and mm -hmm. finding something that's in between. And so, and I think actually that reads through in this object. But, but mm -hmm. at first it was like, let's make something that's a bit of a shelter or a kind of indoor shelter. And, and it was, a, it was a, a, you know, a single, a singular object. And, oh, and it was, but it was going to be a, you know, $75,000 to produce. And, <laughs> you know, it was, it was, it was um, yeah, which isn't what we wanted. We wanted to do something that was accessible. <clears throat> and something that really made use of what they're good at. And, and, a shelter and, for your outdoor office. <clears throat> yeah, maybe. I think, I think I was still, yeah, we love the outdoors. We love, we love the outdoors, exactly, exactly. 
Um, and so, and so then very quickly we, I, I, you know, I reconsidered immediately. I said, you know, there's definitely, that's definitely not the way we want to go. And, and I think the most important thing when I travel and visit factories, I take hundreds of photographs. I mean, it's, and they they were very kind to let me photograph everything, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes it's very, you know, certain factories you're not allowed to photograph certain processes and, and they were very open and, and I had, you know, I, I had probably 200 pictures at my disposal, um, to kind of consider after this this first failed proposal mm -hmm. and so in that in that um i was looking for something you know typical something they do all the time something they're good at um something that uh, that they're that they're good at on an architectural scale that could be very easily translated to the scale of furniture mm -hmm. so in those photographs was was the uh, the extrusion which is the basis of this project right. um which is is uh, yeah, i think you know, it's been referred to as um, like Frank Gehry's two by four. Essentially, it's it's mm -hmm. the it's the it's the extrusion that is formed to support cladding right. um, in a lot mm -hmm. by a lot of contemporary architects. Mm -hmm. um, and so then then you know it was a matter of of sending a, a mock up and, and 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 still we're thinking of it as a singular object. You know, like a, a we, I think there was an S curve or a spiral, mm -hmm. and uh, and that, that's where Paul uh, suggested um, that we we bring this to their shop floor platform. But in the meantime, right, mm -hmm. Andrew and his group have been developing what we call our shop floor platform. Right, so mm -hmm. it's a series of different products, if you will, a bit more architectural scale. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I noticed that there's the cloud wall and the image wall. Was the, this the first um, more object or furniture scaled object that you did through, that you experimented with through Shop Floor? Yeah, yeah. And, and Shop Floor for us is sort of like the app store for, for Apple or, mm -hmm. or Google Docs, right? So ah. you go into those things and you can, you do other things once you get inside. So the app store, you download apps and Google Docs, you pull up a spreadsheet or do the Word document. That's shop floor for us. So within shop floor, there's a bunch of apps. So cloud wall, image wall are facade based mm -hmm. apps. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're much closer to sort of our, what we're used to working on. And, and, and the bench is the first that is at a much different scale, uh, furniture scale, object scale. And, but it lives right alongside the other apps and it takes advantage of all the things that shop floor is really good at. So, it's software, but you don't download anything. It lives in the browser mm -hmm. and it's free. And you just you create a username, you get on, you can save files on there, you can save, uh, you can share files with your colleagues. Yeah, and this and is it, totally exciting for, for furniture. I mean, you, it, it makes so much sense. So from your perspective, I was really curious to ask you, I mean, as a designer, it must be really exciting to be able to work with that kind of uh, um, production timeline oh, yeah. and possibility you kind of you have it there the, mm. the user can see what they're mm. getting mm. but at the same time for you that's also sharing it's a total an loss of control of design <laughs> with it. how is that for you it's, I was really it's, it's, curious it's great about that. it's great I mean I think that the first thing we did um, was really think like okay you know anything is possible almost I mean the the, the extrusion which forms the structural platform for this bench, I mean, that, that has a minimum bend radius, so you can't bend it tighter than 48 inches. Right. So okay. the tightest bench you'd ever get is an eight foot circle, mm -hmm. right? Beyond that, you can do anything, splines, curves, straight sections, and, and so for the exhibition, what we did was, you know, I wanted to open, immediately open it up to someone not not me, you know, someone who, who isn't me. And, um, and so we asked uh, Nathan Antelik to, uh, to create this series of illustrations or drawings for us. And this is, we could consider this an alphabet of possible bench shapes. Mm -hmm. um, and so again, this was like hands off and, and you know, throughout the process he would text me and say, how's this one? And I'd say, I don't know, like, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> I know, it's your call. Yeah. Like, you know, it's, it's up to you, really it's your call. And, and he had to learn the constraints of the web tool. And so everything, this alphabet of shapes that he created, which any, you know, another person could, could create their own alphabet mm -hmm. um, or bench shape. Um, is, is based on tangential arcs and straight lines. Mm -hmm. And that's the only parameter. I mean, I think that, and that, that's pretty exciting. I, I think it would be nice to mm -hmm. see, you know, how big, how, 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 you know, complex, how, you don't know what people will, will do with this. I mean, mm -hmm. so I think design, des as a designer, you end up becoming a designer of parameters in a situation like this. Mm -hmm. um, and the parameters are really important because the, the web app itself is a 3D modeling program 
that a lot of architects and designers are, are used to working in that medium, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. except typically it, it's completely freeform. So the beauty of the Aluminum Bench web app is that anything that you can make on there, we can build no questions mm -hmm. asked. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 it really cuts down the timeline for production and, and you, designers can iterate through things mm -hmm. and very quickly mm -hmm. and they get a price right away. There's, we still love to talk to designers that, that I think that'll always exist, but it, it, we were frustrated on our end when we have to you know, request quotes for things and then this back and forth that can take months. Mm -hmm. And so this is a instantly get feedback and know that if you can build it in the platform, we can build it in real life. You know, there's been some interesting precedents to this. I mean, I think obviously something like Nike ID um, allows people to configure mm -hmm. their own, you know, it's largely decorative. Um, and, but I think here what we've done is something that's extremely practical in the sense that, you know, someone might just have an 18-foot rotunda that they want a bench to hug. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, they wouldn't be able to do that. Someone else might have a, you know, 46-foot long hallway and they want a bench that fits exactly that length. And that's just a straight line. Mm -hmm. Somebody else, you know, it could be as complex or as simple, you know, you can think about, about all of the architectural context that this could be manipulated for. And that's, I think, really practical. Mm -hmm. um, it also, uh, you know, it differentiates itself from previous projects. You know, you can find configurators, mm -hmm. you know, where you're just plugging in Preset Word. units, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know that that exists quite a bit, and uh -huh. this is really fundamentally different. Yeah, you know, we're working within a family of constraints, and this was a fascinating process for us as well because the constraints aren't nearly uh, they're, they're not necessarily technical. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said we can we can build whatever, and we're mm -hmm. used to responding to typically architects come to us. You know, here's my surface I've developed. Mm -hmm. We figure out a way to build that. So now this was a little bit different because it's not, uh, we didn't want it to be so open-ended. Mm -hmm. So the constraints were, in some cases, technical, like you're saying, the, the bend radius and how we section things out. We have, you know, material sizes we're working with, mm -hmm. series of constraints there. But then a lot of this was design-based, right? So um, the, the particular profile, you know, the leg design, how we place it, the algorithms we're using. You know, so now we've got, uh, where we'll lean on Jonathan and say, Okay, we're going to develop an algorithm to place these legs, but um, there's a very visual component. To that, and that's major. I yeah. mean, that algorithm that places these legs, I mean, this, this, this bench right here, this would take a designer in, an off, in my office, I mean, this would, this would have taken us a couple of days of work to decide right. where those legs should be and how far apart they should be. And it, does that look good? Is it structural? Look, right. does it look good? Is it structural? And you're kind of, at, and you're shifting. And the first bench we made, which was like a one, a one, a singular object that did, wasn't made using the web tool, mm -hmm. wasn't made using algorithms. It literally took us like a day and a half to, to get the right leg placement. Mm -hmm. And so what we started realizing was that there was a re relationship between the curvature and the distance between the legs. So the tighter the curve, the, cl the closer the legs want to be, because you have, a, you end up with a cantilever. Right. And so you want closer legs. But the, the, the straighter the bench, the, the longer apart the farther apart the legs can be. And so we taught this computer, you know, we taught the, the algorithm, the software to do this. Oh, that's and, and, fantastic. Yeah, and when it, I read in the press release that there was, um, there was this algorithm that creates a structural and aesthetic, creates the structural and aesthetic placement of the bench legs, I was like, <laughs> and how does that happen? I mean, from a technical perspective, yeah. I was really curious about it. And then, you know, it seems like there's so much there between the relationship between what the software can do and the design. I mean, it was, th this is great in the sense that, like, I feel like we really pushed each other, you know? They, I, I learned a lot, I think, I mean. Yeah, no, it's, it's been a very <laughs> I would hope, I, would hope. Yeah. I mean, it was <laughs> a, yeah. yeah. You, you don't want, you don't want companies do, as a designer, I really think I don't, I, I would never want a company to do me a favor. You know, that's not, you know, you want to engage and push and, and, bring out the best in each other and, mm -hmm. and I think here you know I, I, I mean I don't know nine months ago I don't think I, I thought we would actually get to this level of quality you know because <laughs> think about it a building right is seen from 20 30 feet away do you touch it not really I mean right. nobody's kind of uh, do, do, do you inspect the junction of two little I mean I know some in people yes of course in a, you know, in a, a good architect, a good architect does, but even even you know the tolerances in architecture are like what plus minus. 
It really depends because we, eight, we five, do work yeah, on eight that. Inch or yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what we were asking yeah. this question too. Yeah. I mean, on, on the tolerance on a building might be six inches, you know, whereas mm -hmm. like six inches on a chair would be half the chair. I mean, it's, you know, it's, so the tolerance I and mean, the details, I think we probably they, um, they, they have become better at manufacturing through this exercise, I think. Well, we, for us, so yeah, we work at architectural scale almost exclusively. In furniture scale, it's maybe another order of magnitude higher. We always joke, like anything you can put your butt on, right? It's like, it's got to be really good. And for us, like, if you put your butt on a building, you're probably going to get picked up by the cops or something, right? <laughs> so like, when it, at this scale, it just needs to be so much cleaner, so much more precise. And, and one of the other challenges, and Jonathan, maybe you can speak to this a little bit, I mean, in your other past projects, you kind of, you've worked for a really long time and design, prototype, design, prototype to make a mass-produced object. Mm -hmm. In this case, for us, every one of these benches is a one-off. So it has to be right the first time, and it has to be exactly, there's no testing out things. Like, when, when someone orders one of these, they can figure it and order it. It's gotta be right the first time. There's no, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no Pete. So for us, the web tool enables us. We wrote our own software. When you, when the, a, a bench reaches a state of maturity where it's able to be you know, purchased, mm. it automatically creates all the files that need to, to make that. So it's a level of automation for, for us is, is really important. But it enables us to be very precise. So like the bench we're sitting on right now, there's as soon as I designed it in the web tool, click, you know, let's do it and it automatically made you know, 50 files that, that created what we're sitting on right now. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. And did you design this bench for this room? We, uh, yeah. We, yeah my, I mean, we looked at the floor plan of the gallery mm -hmm. in my office, and we thought, OK, what, what would be a, an impactful way to, to kind of occupy the gallery for, for the period of the exhibition? And mm -hmm. so we, we thought, OK, let's fill this space with mm -hmm. something where people can sit and see each other. And then we thought about the line of sight when you walked in, and what would you see? And, and mm -hmm. you know, we, we have straight sections when you first walk in, and then you're surprised by the big curve as you come in. And, but anyway, I did this as a sketch. Like I just took the floor plan of the gallery, put a grid on it so it was to scale, mm -hmm. sketched what I wanted, took a picture with my phone, sent it to Andrew, and I said, you know, do this with the web tool. Because at that point, the web tool was still in, in, in development, so uh -huh. I couldn't, on our end, it was difficult mm -hmm. to do that. But uh, Andrew was able to do it very quickly. Right but at now, that point, you knew the algorithms pretty well in yeah. terms of well, the, what you could do with the curves. Totally. Well, I knew, I knew exactly. You knew that you were well inside. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And it was just, and then the, the tool placed these, I mean, these legs were placed by a computer. I mean, these were, this is what, these are non-human non uh, pla right. leg placements. <laughs> so what did it take to get to that? I'm really curious to that. I'm always a, a how person, mm -hmm. a, a why. Like, I want to know, what was your collaboration like in terms of getting to this place where the leg placement comes out, right? every time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What was, how did, were you communicating? Were you emailing? Yeah. Were you on the phone? Were you visiting? It's, it's a way of understanding, you know, having a common language, I think, because it's not, it's not something you specify. Right. You know, Jonathan didn't write down and say, okay, if the curve is this radius, the space is this. Right. You know, ultimately, we're going to describe it in those terms, but it's, it's much more of a visual exercise. Mm -hmm. you know, back so and it forth. seems mm -hmm. like there must have been a lot of trial and error. Yeah. We would, when you think about it, there's no, you know, one bench. You know, we're designing for infinite possibilities that somebody will come up with. Right. So it's a rule set. Mm -hmm. And we would we would basically in my office log into the web tool and just try and try our best to break it. You know, <laughs> we would just try to make the hardest, biggest, ugliest bench you could possibly make. And, right. and, and through that process, we would just make screen captures, and it would be like, oh, oh, there's a leg missing, or oh, too many legs. Like all of a sudden, there would be like five legs all within the same three feet. You know, <laughs> yeah. the, computer, yeah. the computer was learning. You know, it was yeah. like slowly learning how to. And it was interesting to watch this computer learn how to, you know, or how to, watch this um, software learn how to to do this. And it what was, does that mean when you say? That? watching the software learn. Does that mean you would call Andrew and he would teach the software? <laughs> yeah, I'd sit, I'd, sit yeah. That, I'd sit that computer down. Yeah. No, it, it's, it's learning, it, so it's not quite I learning, but... There was also a computer sitting at the table. It was I think, yeah, I think I was learning from Jonathan how to, like, so, but I think that was our process. So Jonathan would either by hand, because there was something, I think, intuitive about laying the legs out at a certain yeah, point, yeah. and then some testing on with your office where, 
we went back and forth with a lot of screen captures and seeing the bench in plan, Jonathan would say, hey, I really like the way this looks, but this, this other thing doesn't work. And I'll be like, well, here's some other, here's what we could do and here's what doesn't work. So it was a lot of that back and forth. Mm. In terms of how they're placed though, it, Jonathan has described the bench sort of as a set of parameters and really a, a system rather than a singular object. And so on our end, we work to develop a, a computer program that takes, it samples curvature. The bench is really about curvature. It's either arcs or straight lines. Um, but it has to be viewed at, in, in a whole, as a whole object. Because when you pull one leg, it, you have to make sure it's not too far away from the other leg. But yeah, holistically, is the, the legs had to be laid out. So it was much more quick for us to do that in a computer program. So there's different parameters we were able to, to, uh, to change. Mm -hmm. So it started with a, a physics model, like a real-time physics model. And the best way that I, I can describe it is if you, if you could imagine that there's a rubber band in between each one of the legs, like linking one leg to the other. Mm -hmm. And where the bench curves, the rubber bands are a little bit tighter or like heavier rubber bands. So they pull those legs together more and they, they pull the other, the lighter rubber bands a little bit further. Oh, okay. It's kind of, I mean, there's not actually rubber bands, but it, that's probably the best way to describe yeah. it. So if you think about it like that, they were able to kind of slide. Mm -hmm. So where it's, where it's straight, it's a little lighter. There's less force. The reason why I was asking all of these communications, collaborations mm -hmm. questions is that I heard um, a couple of people last night talking, I, we're here at Neocon is going on, it's happening in Chicago right now, and I was at an event last night, and um, one thing that was really exciting to me to keep hearing is that people felt that this year it felt so much more youthful, there was so much more of a focus on, um, on younger design, younger designers, and so much more of a focus on communication. Mm. It was in terms of the products and the, the working processes, there seems to be a, more and more of a focus right now on this idea of communication. So mm. not only um, the ways in which the, the products are coming out, but the ways that they're being created. And it sounds like your, um, your collaboration on this is absolutely emblematic of that. Have you noticed that? Oh, totally. In, yeah. We see this all the time, and, and it can be a trap, too, because we'll, we'll work with young designers or architects where they have every tool at their disposal. You know, they could literally you know, give us a model and have each sheet pieced out and broken, and in their mind, you know, they're kind of facilitating this process. But what's missing in that is uh, you know, the, the collaboration on our yeah. side, you know, the most successful projects, and this is at any scale, you know, huge architectural or you know, very small objects, it's where there's this very tight collaboration and back and forth, back and forth, and mm -hmm. now we're establishing a language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there's that, that Louis Kahn, what does a brick want idea, you know, mm -hmm. and I think you, you, as a designer, you absolutely need to be in dialogue with the materials and the technologies and the techniques that you're using. And I, I really believe it's a craft. You know, it's, it's not in the sense of, you know, um, uh, crocheting things, in the sense of, of industrial craft. You know, mm -hmm. like that, that's, and, and you have to, as a, you know, my, my role is to learn the, what, you know, what does the extrusion want? You know what does the what does the what does the, and they and they and you know and, and Paul and Andrew helped teach me that you know and, and we learned I learned largely in dialogue and through WebEx meetings and phone calls mm -hmm. and visits and prototypes and photos and text messages and phone calls and I mean it's a flurry of, of learning and communication mm -hmm. to get something like this right and to educate at least myself about you know how to do this and what to do. Um, you know, and then I mean, okay, the leg, the leg comes from something totally different. It's it's a it's a it's a casting, uh, mm -hmm. which is something that I've done, I've worked with in my previous work for Null, um, it cast aluminum, and it's something that that isn't typically in in the yeah. shop at Zaner. So mm -hmm. it's something that we kind of brought into the project. Um, oh, that's yeah, nice. Yeah, I think there's a lot of respect though between each party's skill set. Yeah. Right. So, for us, we work all the time in parametric models in a way where we could. I mean, the bench is sort of the brainchild of, of Jonathan and Sketch, but would not have been possible without this technology on the other side. So I think it was a really good collaboration in that sense, where it's, it's a very nuanced 
object. It's actually, it, it's really great for me. I feel like I have a very privileged position on the team because I, and I talk with Paul and John, I work with Paul and, and talk with Jonathan weekly about, about the design, but also being very intimately involved in writing the software and making sure it gets to the shop. So it's like an awesome place to, to be, I think, <laughs> in, in, in the process. And, and to know that, you know, again, like every one of these objects is, is unique. It makes it really, actually really hard to build, but through techniques that we've pioneered, we're able to, to hook up the, the artistry and engineering almost seamlessly. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll be really excited to see what the, the alphabet of forms that gets created mm -hmm. is. I mean, I, I love these drawings as, as a sort of exploration of what the possibilities are, but I'm cu so curious to see what people are going to do. Are you going to make it those public in any way? Like, I'm sure you see you keep a file on them. That's a, and I think it depends on the client. <laughs> <laughs> if they're willing yeah. To, yeah. to share, but it'd be I mean, so interesting. Each, each design see. gets saved um, in within the system mm -hmm. and gets a number, and you know, so it could be reordered or uh, you know, maintenance or you know, over time. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I think it really depends on. Yeah, who's there's a whole it. user experience when mm -hmm. you're in the program, mm -hmm. and and part of it is uh, you know these rules that we've set up, you know, so we've created this play space almost, mm -hmm. where as a designer you can, you know, you don't go in with this fixed idea. We have several starting points that mm -hmm. Jonathan had um, created to, you know, jump off from, uh, but then it's free form, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you're, you're always working within the boundaries that have been established. So, uh, I mean, in a way, with architecture, we're always responding to the designer's intent. You know, so now we've given this tool to designers so that they've created a space. Now they can get very specific with the object within that space. Mm -hmm. One of the things that really struck me when I was playing around with the software was, well, let me back up a little bit. When I first read about the project, I, my first thought was one of my first questions to you was, how does that make you feel as a designer, you know, giving away mm -hmm. the, or sharing? That um, the design with with the user, but then when I when I saw the images and used the software, which is by the way very intuitive, yeah, I was able to get around in it. Um, and it was really fun to play with. It was really fun. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that struck me was how every it still is very much designed. There's there's a specific aesthetic, even though you can make almost any shape, there's a really beautiful aesthetic that carries through. And uh, that was really impressive to me. And you know, incidentally, when we were looking for references for shapes, I kept kind of thinking, okay, where have I seen this before? Like, where do we find objects that curve or, or slight curves, and it's not a sharp curve, because again, it's the minimum bend radius of 48 inches. And somehow we came across um, the floors on Zen Gardens, these kind of raked, these raked, um, raked surfaces of, uh -huh. of stone. Yeah. And what's interesting about that is it's, it's really similar in the sense that the rake doesn't make abrupt turns. You know, they kind of guide it and they make slow curves and slow turns. And, and we looked at, you know, a few books of, of Zen Gardens and we found, you know, generally about 18 or so shapes that were repeating. And these were almost always um, arcs, tangential arcs and straight lines. Mm -hmm. um, so the formal language exists you know, elsewhere. Um, also, some typography uh, works in this way. Um, but I think putting that parameter on the shape of the bench means that you end up with, you can't really, I mean, it, it's hard to make it look bad. I mean, it's, you, of course you can. I tried. I tried to break it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I failed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All my designs started looking really good. <laughs> yeah, that's an algorithm. Yeah. There's, there's yeah, there's another <laughs> algorithm in there. Jonathan made me put that I in there at the last minute. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it's definitely possible to make some monstrosities in there. <laughs> we've, we've definitely made some. Yeah. Well, great. Thank you all so much. This has been a really enlightening conversation. I'm really excited about the product. And it's quite comfortable. I have to say, I love the feel of it. Cool. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.